You're listening to Comics for Fun and Profit, and this is Comics Review with Kyle and Drew. And these are comics that came out, let's see, May 6th. This is episode 217. Does that sound about right? That sounds perfect. All right. And uh, a lot of good stuff came out. Kyle, what was your favorite? My favorite was Ant-Man number four. Five or six? Which number is this one? Ant Man number five. I got yeah. confused because this is the end of the first arc. Um, this is, of course, written. Is this your boy? This is my boy, Nick Spencer. Nick Spencer. Yeah, yeah. We know you know him from uh, Superior Foes of Spider Man, and uh, I've really gotten to know him here more than there. He he seems like he's writing specifically for me. There are some really fun little references in here. There's some, you know. It ties up nice and fun, and I like my at least semi-happy endings in this. So for a book where I don't really know the big goofy pink guy that's supposed to be the bad guy very well, yeah, um, I still, I mean, it didn't throw me off at all. Um, of course, like I said, in this one we've got uh, we've got our, our we, we don't have Hank Pym in this one. This is uh, Scott Lang. He is our Ant Man in this one, and we have, of course, his daughter has been accosted, kidnapped, and her heart has been removed and used to um, bring the big pink guy whose name is escaping me at the moment. Big big guy. Yeah. Ah, crap. Anyways, Darren Cross. Yes, bring Darren Cross back to life. And we've, of course, got Ant-Man trying to stop this. So, in this one... We get Ant-Man essentially just trying to fend off Darren Cross long enough to give uh, the surgeon there time to put a new heart in his daughter and at the very least save her life. So that's his major major thing he's trying to do, is just buy time uh, so that his daughter can live. And, you know, meanwhile this guy, you know, Darren Cross wants to do everything he can to both kill the daughter and Ant-Man, because he's out for vengeance, because Ant-Man is the person who caused him to be, you know, gone for the last 20 years or whatnot. Um, But it's just really fun sensibility and, uh, you know, the normal struggles that that, uh, Scott Lang goes through in this and his uh, normal, slightly sarcastic tone and his uh, self-deprecating humor he goes through, but still always trying to do the right thing in this one. But, um, like I said, there's some really fun references. At one point, he has to... You know, his daughter has the new heart in, but she's uh, attempt. She, her body's rejecting it, so he shrinks down and jumps into her bloodstream. Like he says, he's actually this has been done before inside the Hulk, so he's done it before. But as he's in there, he's uh, attempting to destroy all of the w- white blood cells that are attacking the new the new organ. Which and I he, feel like I've seen this scene multiple times. Yeah, yeah. But I like how they describe it as, it's like Battletoads level 3 hard. And that gave me a really, really good chuckle. Because I I know what they're talking about with stage 3 of Battletoads and just how friggin' difficult that game is. So I like that. And those little references and those little Easter eggs they throw in there. Um, They throw in a nice little reference to the movie Zoolander, which you don't get a lot to. Where uh, he makes a little reference to Darren Cross where he he, uh, describes something about, what is this, a center for ants? Which is directly from Zoolander. And which then, I, I didn't pick that one up, but, yeah, I, but that's he, funny. The funny thing is he immediately catches himself and says, Oh crap, you were dead during that. You don't even understand that reference. And then he's like, I gotta be careful, you know, spoiling and doing that thing for kind of stuff. And then he just throws in, Don't let anybody ever spoil House of Cards for you. And just things like that in there. So, I mean, it's fun. It buttons up to a really happy ending at the end of it, you know. Really? Saves the daughter. And what's what's happy about the the last panel? Well, because it's all on him. That's his decision in the end is the things that he does. Before, it was a berating wife that always never let him do anything. This one, he got the happy ending. He got his wife to say, I want you in our lives. And it's all on him. If he comes to the realization, which he does, that he is bad for his daughter and hers, at the very least, on its, it's on his own terms. And that's so happy for me. He's going to abandon his family. Oh, that's great. If he has to, that but but it's on him. Now, it's never a good thing, and he may have to get past some things, but at the very least, you get the point where he's he's validified in the lives of his family. Like, when he leaves, he has saved his daughter. His wife is happy with that and is not, you know, at home essentially bad-mouthing the father to the kid and everything. And, and if he so wanted it to, it could be on the right track. 
But part of the 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 good things I like about Scott Lang as Ant Man is he's he's an amazing father, and he, he in the end he realizes you know what this this was because I'm here and I'm in her life at this moment, and until I can control that, I I don't think I need to be causing ill will like I've just done on more than one account. But it's on his own terms. So yes, you get a happy ending. You get a super happy ending about three pages from the end when you think it's just going to be a happy ending. But then he, of course, comes with the terms and says, I don't think I can be in her life right now. But it's it, he makes that decision. It's not made for him like it was in issue two, or issue one and two and three. So I think it buttons up nicely, but it de- it doesn't sugarcoat it. it. It's still a real story. So I like how it ended. I like how it, well, I like the beginning, middle, and the end of it. Yeah, but you don't make that. That's a stupid decision. You don't do that. But it's that character making that decision, and part of that decision is because of how much he loves his daughter and what he just went through and thinking he was going to lose her and that it was his fault and, you know, that him being in the, her life caused this. But it was on him. Nobody told him. Like like I said, in issue one where the wife says, you're bad for your child, we're leaving you. That didn't happen. He he had to come with a realiz- realization of his own Maybe me being around here is more harm than good. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in here that I really like. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, like, yeah, I, I laugh, and and I like Nick Spencer's sensibilities mm-hmm. a lot. And, uh, you know, having seen the trailer now for Ant-Man, and I can see uh, Paul Rudd and kind of, you know, having that same kind of humor, mm-hmm. uh, works for me. It works for me. I mean, hopefully Nick... Nick Spencer got to do a little consulting or something for for the script. Oh, I hope so. I think that that he'll be a good uh, Ant Man, and I, I think there'll be some dry humor and and some funny stuff from Paul Rudd in there. Uh, in a lot of this, like this comic has. In it. I, I mean, this comic in and of itself has really, really increased my my longing for Ant Man to the point where it's, yeah, I'm actually interested. Yeah, I'm more interested <laughs> in that than I was of Ultron. Because just what this comic done is how I really like that Scott Lang character, and Paul Rudd fits the, sen- fits the sensibilities as far as I'm concerned. Wait a minute, you're more you're more interested in Ant Man than you were Avengers: Age of Ultron. Correct. Wow. I mean, my hype meter is you know top number one is Star Wars, number two is Ant Man, three is Ultron, and four is Fantastic Four. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you haven't seen uh, Ultron yet? I have not. Okay. Have you? Yeah, pretty good. Cool. Pretty, pretty good. But yeah, this, this it's an A book, and I really, really, really liked it. Yeah, I, I, I'm at the B level. Um, still a really good comic. I like it. Um, uh, yeah, I don't... The, the stuff with the kid's heart, I didn't really... I didn't like the precarious position that his daughter was in. I thought that was kind of weird the way they did that I, did, I, I don't know if it really mm-hmm. completely worked for me um, I didn't like the ending as well as you did and uh, but I, I still think this is a really good comic and I, I like a lot about it and I like the character and this really this comic has really uh, kind of solidified on my reading list now and it's going to stay there cool good stuff good stuff all around um, I uh, really liked a, a Marvel book as well, and it's a uh, Kanan Last Padawan. Wait a two. minute, you liked Kanan enough for it to be your top book? I liked it more than I liked the first issue. Okay, I thought this was really good, very strong comic, and uh, I, I yeah, I liked it tons more than I liked that first issue. And I don't know if I was in the wrong state of mind mm-hmm. or what, but this. It really worked for me. Now this is a uh, uh, Wiseman. Is, Greg Wiseman is doing the writing. Uh, Pepe mm-hmm. Larraz doing mm-hmm. the art. Uh, and this is kind of a uh, an earlier history of 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 Kanan. Uh huh. And uh, this was this was really action packed. And you know, it, it was a real adventure. You got. To, I, I really thought it worked on on tons of levels and really engaged me with the character more so than in the first issue. I think there was just too much stuff going on jumping around and things in that first issue for me. Uh-huh. This was this was a lot a, a tighter focused story and you know the interaction between the kid and the alien that he stole the ship. 
Uh-huh. Uh, that, that was that was a great scene. That was really awesome. Um, yeah, I really like that kid. I think I think he's great. Did you say is he in Rebels? Yes. When you get to Rebels, you get uh, Kanan as a full fledged an- adult Jedi. So he is the uh, the master in that. Okay. In that and it's really cool because what you're getting in this one is you're getting Kanan as a young kid, and you're seeing so much of the things that led him to Ezra in Rebels because in Rebels. You have Ezra as the kid who's been on his own for years, does not have parents, survives survives in the shadows, just always one step ahead of the Empire, just as a scavenging kid. And yeah. as you see Kanan doing this back in the day, you see exactly what led him to Ezra based on what he looks like he's going to go through and how similar it is to what we have in Rebels. So, you, you know, you see where when he picks Ezra to be his Padawan in Star Wars Rebels... You see, you know the similarities between those two characters. Yeah, I've I, I got a feeling that when we get to the natural stopping point for this series or something, it'll it'll jump me right into the. I might actually want to watch that. I want to watch that actual animated series now. I'm kind of excited for it, but I want to read some more of this first because I, I, I really haven't watched any animated series ever. So mm-hmm. uh, since I was very young, and so this would be. One of my first. And I've also been t- toying around with Batman the Animated Series, which I've heard good things about as well. So, uh, at some point, I need to take the plunge, and and I'm digressing from the the Padawan <laughs> review, but uh, I really do need to to check out some of these animated series that are so well received. Yeah, and this is uh, this is still my favorite art of any of the uh, the Star Wars books. I still think he is on point with everything that he's doing on this, even the grit and the dirt of him hiding in the bushes and running away from... Uh, he does empire. have the advantage of not having a trilogy that everybody knows inside and out, backwards and forwards, mm-hmm. and well-known you know, uh, stars that are having to be incorporated into the, the comic and their likenesses. Mm-hmm. So he has that advantage. You don't even know... If, you, if you're telling me Re- Rebels started after this kid's older, so you don't really know what this kid's supposed to look like. Correct. Not at this age. We don't ever flash back to him right. as a kid. So right. we so, know what he looks like as an adult, but we do not know what he looks like uh, when he was a Padawan. I will I will give you that the, the art is very good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think he has some advantage. And you yeah, you could see that there's Ewan McGregor looking Obi-Wan in a, in a couple of panels mm-hmm. in here. Um, and it's reminiscent of, but not spot on. Ewan McGregor. Yep. Um, yeah, with this very cool. Uh, I, I'm loving every one of these Star Wars books. All four of them are really good. Uh, shade, di- you know, different variants of, sh- uh, of good. Um, Darth Vader's probably still my favorite. Um, Star Wars has really kind of bounced back. I, I kind of like it better than I did for there was a couple issues where I wasn't as, as thrilled with it, but I kind of like it a lot more now. Um, I'm kind of looking forward to the Princess Leia being over and starting on with uh, uh, Lando, mm-hmm. but you know it's still. I think I think it can still stick the land, landing. I've I've enjoyed some of those those issues, and I like the introduction of that new character. And then this is really this second issue was really a surprise for me how much I liked it. And um, yeah, it's really cool. Star Wars is back, baby, and <laughs> I gave this an A. Yeah, it's an A for me as well. Like I said, I, I, I've done all the rebels i'm looking really really forward to uh uh when season two starts up this summer of star wars rebels and just getting some more things like in, in uh like there's a conversation between the inquisitor and kanan in star wars rebels where they ask what's the last thing that your master said to you and it was run and you kind of yeah. see that scene oh yeah as it plays out because that's something that we knew but we didn't we've never seen her his master or anything of it but we see it in issue one and then we see her fall in this one and we see exactly how it happened then we really understand that he was only really tr- I don't, we don't think he was trained for very long under his master so to see where he came from this is really kind of cool and I'm really really enjoying this series yeah this is cool and it's just it's totally fresh for me so uh, with zero zero knowledge base at all and, it, and it's working so hats off to Greg Wiseman who knew uh, let's you didn't want... Let's see. Uh, we should probably talk uh, Convergence and get that out of the way. 
I didn't read it. I jumped off of Convergence. I was supposed to issue, read issue five. And when you look at the cover of this, this is our, our, our one crazy guy. Um, um, and he's down underneath the planet, of course. And I just couldn't do it. I stopped. <laughs> I didn't read it. It didn't seem worth my time. Demos and Brainiac and... But know. you did read a second issue of one of the many. Yeah, correct. Two I issues. Re- yep. I read uh, Convergence Nightwing Oracle number two. Um, I was very, very underwhelmed with number one and exactly what it was trying to do and say. And the fact that it really did very little. Especially when you look at this number two. I could have simply just read this. I did not have to read issue one in any way, shape, or form to understand this issue two. This was the main story. It's the battle between Nightwing and uh, Hawk Girl and Hawk Man. Um, oh yeah, and an Oracle had started the battle ten minutes ago. Exactly, like Oracle there, right? knowing everything before it happened, and uh, you get a guest appearance by Black Canary in here, and um, Hawk Girl and Hawk uh, Man have they've kind of they've got some technology for as. Uh, Archaic as they look in their armor and their swords and everything, they're actually quite technological. So they've actually got surveillance and surveillance bots around this world, and that's kind of how they've gained a little bit of a foothold. But uh, Oracle and Black Canary have tapped into that surveillance a little bit, and Black Canary, of course, does her uh, her little shriek to kind of uh, knock the helmets off of both of our hawk people and take the advantage back for Nightwing a good bit so he's able to overcome Hawkman and then Oracle just has to uh, deal with Hawk Girl and does a, a pretty cool job. It's very well done because of course this is the Barbara Gordon that isn't Batgirl. She's in a wheelchair so you know she's not going to win a fight between uh, her and uh, Hawk Girl but she does a pretty good job on her own and she and Black Canary are able to hack into you know, while Hawk Girl says you'll never be able to hack into our surveillance and our bots and anything, but they are able to hawk or hack into the other drones that the actual convergence system uses to kind of use them to take out that that on their world. And then you get the nice little happy ending between Nightwing and Oracle because, of course, we had the proposal in issue one that didn't go the way Nightwing wanted it to, and I was a little weirded out by the Nightwing and Start Fire stuff, but. Apparently that was just permission being said and everything. So it, we get a nice little happy ending and a nice little wrap up from this. And you know, in the end, they're like, "We're not going to kill Hot Girl," and you know, feel free to assimilate into our world. So it ends happy and it's neat. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know where we get from this and what the point really was because we didn't really destroy any world or do anything. Yeah, we just <laughs> got the same. Okay, this this gives us the same thing that we got in Teen Titans fifty or whatever from nineteen. 19- 82, or whatever it is, so, <laughs> it's, I mean, this one was much better than issue one, so I, I'm gonna give it a B, Yeah, because it was at least self-contained enough, it wasn't just the stupid, hey, we're running out of stake, and we're under a dome, and nobody has powers, at least that was all gone. Yeah. So. Well, my convergence was Batman and Robin, number two, and it was pretty forgettable, but <laughs> it, it kind of felt like a um, maybe like an annual would feel and, you know, at, at the end it, they were like, you know, well, we're always going to be family, and then they're like, right off in, there's this, the, the, the screenshot of them swinging across the uh, and, and it just ended after they, they won the battle and but then they won the battle, but really there's there's really nothing. Nothing happened. Yeah. Okay. So we've got we've got each people winning this battle. So where does that go? What does that do? Does that mean this world is saved and and it still lives on uh, under a fun. dome on a planet? Do we find out in convergence? Uh, uh, you know, they they have like a little tally or something, or or I think what I think is happening is the convergence miniseries is where actual things happen. And all these little two shots are just inconsequential glimpses and stories that don't mean anything, but are only possible because of the Convergence world. And so I keep thinking there's more at stake in these little two shots, but when I, when I look back, I'm thinking, actually, these are just nothing. Nothing at all. Yeah, so like if you're just reading these and not the mainline convergence, they've done nothing for you. 
But then, I mean, I say that, and then you look at the front with the little, you know, they have the worlds represented on that title page of the first issue anyway, the first issues anyway. So it makes it seem like there's some kind of consequential battle between these worlds that'll eliminate some and some will live on and it'll matter. Mm-hmm. But but I don't think it does. I don't think so either. But my convergence, Batman and Robin, was just okay and it was a C. <laughs> Gotta love it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it, and it really helped me purge DC from my life for, for the next few weeks. So you're not going to so, jump back into any of the number twos? Um... Only the ones that I'm contractually obligated to read for review <laughs> and podcast purposes will I be reading. Um, I, I, for next week, uh, I believe I'll be reading Astro City, and that's only tangentially DC because it's a Vertigo book. Otherwise, I would have a big goose egg for DC. So gotcha. DC, you effed up with me, huh. buddy, because uh, it, it. I mean, it. It's working for a very minute number of people yeah and uh i i just think they started all the gate way too slow they like i like you said they should have started with these number two mm-hmm. issues just made them one shots and and flipped it and you know did a little uh let, let's do a flashback in issue two that talks about life in the dome because that they were pointless mm-hmm. and they were repetitive and at least you would have got them later yeah um, I mean, I'm going to do Teen Titans, I'm going to do Aquaman, but if they'll be at the bottom of the stack, and if I don't make it to them, I don't care. <laughs> exactly. That's all I am. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't even, yeah, I don't even care if I get a reader or not. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sad. So sad. But on the flip side, we've got uh, the first issue of Secret Wars from Marvel, which, uh, you took a glance at, or you didn't even take a glance I at? I did. I took a grant, glance at I actually read the, the Free Comic Book Day Zero issue. I did, too. I, I liked that. I thought it was strong. I, I liked the whole Valerie, Valeria, Val- Valerie, whatever you pronounce her name, Yeah. and her working on that life raft. And I thought that was a nice little mm-hmm. story. Yeah. And then when I got to issue one, I really wasn't even anything about anything yeah. in there. About issue, about page two. 10 or, or 11 of this book, you get the cast, the 616 Marvel cast and the yeah. 1610 Ultimate Universe cast. And yes. I looked at that up, down, and I thought, let me check off who I actually... Who do I know? Yeah, who do I know, care about, or would make sense? All right, I'm in Thor, I'm in Spider-Man, I read enough of Captain America. I know Spider-Woman a little bit. That's it. None of them. I don't think that's yeah. the same guy. All right, I'm not leading this. Yeah. Yeah, in it, as I read it, it felt like uh, Infinity. Yeah, the Jonathan Hickman book. Yeah, and that was pretty much predominantly Avengers people and and, and Avengers stories. And I don't read Avengers because I mean I like Jonathan Hickman some of his stuff, but I don't like his Avengers books. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just don't work for me. And this is what this is what it is. I think it's going to be like that. And uh, do you like if you like Jonathan Hickman, and if you liked Infinity, and if you liked uh, his Avengers run, well, then I think this is going to be great for you. You're going to love it. Uh, if that wasn't for you, so far, issue zero and one, uh, it is not a, a, a home run for me. Uh, I I do feel obligated to give it a, a, a second issue since I gave Convergence. Uh, zero, one, and two. So I, I want to do that with Secret Wars as well. I mean, this has long-term ramifications. We have to know what's going on in this, right? I could read the Wikipedia entry <laughs> afterwards and be fine, or you yeah. can let me know. Let me know what I, what I missed. Because um, but- you and I have pledged to do some Secret Wars. You're going to do the Ultimate Universe, th- uh, the end of the Ultimate Universe portion. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what I've volunteered to do. I was, yeah, oh, I was going to do World. Spider-Verse. Spider-Verse, and then I was going to dabble into Battle World and see if you I could catch on. Yeah, yep. Yep, yep. So you were going to try Mainline until it bucked you off, and you were going to do mm-hmm. Ultimates, Ultimate yeah. Ends or whatever. Yeah. Now, now Secret War, Wars was a long book. It was like 48 pages or something mm-hmm. like that, I think. And I didn't like the first half, but I thought it got stronger and stronger as it as it went on. 
and it ended up being a pretty good read by the time you were, you were done. And it was uh, a lot of action. Um, it didn't seem to take place over a long period of time, uh, but it it was uh, it was pretty cool, and it had a really cool ending. Like the last page really propelled you into oh crap I, I've I've got to keep reading because there's oh. a there's a a page on there that actually looks very consequential and I don't know if it will be or not but it from what I I was I was very intrigued and I want to see more and I don't really want to spoil that for anybody who hasn't read it yet because it 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 might matter and it might not. You, n- you never know with Secret Wars mm-hmm. or with, with Marvel or with yeah. DC and for that matter. Um, it, it's, but it, it was enough of an intrigue for me that I'm like, well, I may not really have enjoyed reading Secret Wars that much, but I got to read the next issue, you know, uh, just to see what happens. I, I, I care about what I just want to know and I don't want to wait too long. Um, now after that, all bets are off after issue two and I get my, uh, hopefully a little more stuff fleshed out uh, at that point I'm probably we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens yeah. Um, but yeah I, Secret Wars got stronger uh, I, if you if you have some time <laughs> to read it you probably you probably should check it out because it did get stronger as it went along um, I ended up giving it a B hmm. okay fair enough um, uh, how did uh, Wolf Moon end with a whimper um, oh, I know. I wanted to Cullen Bunn, um, you know, where terra, tale of a man searching for a werewolf. We have instead of your atypical lichen story, we have a werewolf who essentially moves from host to host on a monthly basis, takes over that person, becomes a obnoxious killing machine for the the three days of the full moon or whatnot, and then moves on and leaves that shell, uh, you know, that person, a shell of their former self, in, in a area with just absolute death and murder around him and you've got uh dylan your main character who was taken over by the wolf about a year prior to this um and knows the emptiness he feels and he he has vowed to do whatever he can to kill this werewolf within its next host as quickly as possible to stop it from uh, destroying any other people um we're in our six of six um there's been a, some th- even in a six issue mini we've had some throwaway issues here and there. Yeah, wasn't there a whole storyline where there was a guy that had been possessed by the wolf that was then going to go get everybody else that had been possessed by the wolf to kill them? Yeah, that he was going back and, and murdering people that essentially were old hosts. Yeah, and uh, I, I see. I lost track of who's who in this at, at some point. Yeah, there's too many yeah. ex, ex-wolves in here. Yeah, but we catch up to the guy who's responsible for... Uh, we have the one character we met who's essentially kind of an expert on the... We've all kind of boiled this down to an Indian shaman thing, uh, where possession and, you know, there's a great spirit that moves from person to person that becomes this werewolf on the full moon. And you've got a guy that we met in issue four that was talking about this, and he's, uh, we, you know, he's, he's dying of cancer. And then in this issue, we find out that he is trying to ta- track down the next host to try to do a ritual to transfer uh, the spirit into him so that he can be the lichen host because uh-huh. he sees the, the regenerative pop- properties that uh, a werewolf has when you're in this body. Because he was at one point, I believe, uh, a host for this product. Yeah. So... He goes and and finds the next person, a, a little girl who's the host, and ritualistically changes himself into into the next werewolf because he thinks that it'll it'll heal his body and he'll be able to live um, as this werewolf for the rest of eternity as an immortal. So that's in the end what it is, and then we get a standoff with Dylan who has a an MP5 full of silver bullets. And just riddles this thing with bullets, but it never seems to die. But we find we have a little silver letter opener that we seem to use to take out this werewolf. Um, and I'm like, all right, cool. It looks like everybody died, and we don't get a happy ending. And then Cullen Bun friggin' does something stupid in the last page, what? where we just see that there's a bunch of other werewolves. So now I don't care. <laughs> oh. So we, we get nothing close to a happy ending. We just see that oh, there's a lot of this. This wasn't a one-time thing. There's a whole species of these 
murderous evil werewolves and now our main character looks to be dead and he didn't really do anything it looks like throughout this whole thing so that's too bad because you know, there, although none of the issues were great there the, were the some first, good ones the first one was good the second one was good as we kind of got into the lineage of it but then we just yeah. spun our wheels for three issues right um right. Like, this issue, I didn't like the way it ended. I didn't like the battle sequence and the fact that we still can't hit anything with 65 rounds, but for some odd reason the letter opener wins us the day. Um, all in all, it was a good story. I liked the shaman aspect of the of the, of the the uh, the werewolf more than your typical werewolf lycanthropy. Um, so that was kind of neat, but it just didn't have enough steam to pull me through it. In the end, it's a B-, and the series as a whole was probably a C+. Plus. Okay, so the 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 ending really tainted the whole series yeah, for you. Yeah, absolutely. At the end, when I'm like, "Oh, we we spent all this time hunting down and getting the vengeance and the, trying to make the world a better place," and then, oh, it turns out it was all for naught. I hate that crap. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Uh, Nailbiter number twelve. This was a good issue. I liked it. It's a very good issue. We learn about uh. You know, Finch has tortured the nail biter. Uh, that was our, great. In our previous issue, he spent the time torturing the, the nail biter, and he's an expert on torture. But in the end, we find out that the best way to torture the nail biter is to just gently bite your fingernails in front of him, and maybe even pull a cuticle out till your finger bleeds just a little bit. And, but he has no part of that process, and it drives him up the wall. So he's willing to do whatever you take if you do that kind of thing to him. So, uh, a very interesting tactic, even after stabbing him in the thigh and cutting him the best way to get the uh, to really torture the nail biter is to you know bite your own nails yeah that um, was great but we go back to uh uh the sheriff's house and because we've he's apparently the nail biter is going to tell us some really wicked information here and uh that we haven't been privy to and uh um but we before we get into that, we get Agent Baker show up. And Agent Baker was the one that in the last issue was in a cage underneath the serial killer graveyard watching a torture happen, right? Is that... I was wondering what she was talking about. Yeah, she was the one that was in the cage and had, had everything explained to her, so she also knows the answers. Um... So everybody in here but us really knows what's going on. <laughs> well, our our torture FBI guy doesn't know everything yet, does he? Uh, I, th- I don't know if the nobody has told him or not. Oh, yeah, he did, because he said, now you're going to tell, the- tell them exactly. Yeah. 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 I would assume he got the answers, and now he wants him to repeat it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. But yeah, we still have no clue. Yeah, so we've got a lot more to learn in here. Um, they they make a reference in this, and I'm trying to think of what movie it's from. It's the where at one point she says, "They made me watch." Yeah, what is that from? I thought I, I have no idea. Ah, crap, it's a reference to a movie or something. Do you think it is? Yeah, I've, 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 I've I immediately was like, ah, what is that from? I, I think it was something where like somebody's cannibalizing and eating somebody, and they made me watch them eat my own like I can't remember so that's one of those references that I I want to understand but I can't remember where it came from now the superhero pastor yeah that's Uh, weird where did that come from I I don't know if that's something that's always been or if that is kind of a coping mechanism from his son's murder Uh, we also see that his wife is in so much denial that she still expects her son to come home so that's, that's that's an odd thing there that was that was pretty interesting yeah, I mean, it sounds like we're going to get a lot of real. <laughs> and I was really, really thrown by the the uh, daydream two panels, where uh, where our uh, our officer, our oh, yeah. sorry, our detective, our agent, yeah, you know, in one panel you just see her stab the sheriff in the in the face, gut her, reach her hands in her guts, and spread it all over her face, and then we flash out of it. Because I think and that's because of her trauma in the cave, and I think she's she was told to kill. And cover things up. So I think she's actually got a mission, but I can't remember. I got to do some more research on that one. A um, lot of stuff going on here, but a really good a issue. More, 
Yeah, I liked some of the origin, uh, early early days of the nail biter. I thought that was cool. <laughs> would you think? Yeah, yeah. The, he's still eating the bloody cookie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what did you think of the clown serial killer? That was great. <laughs> did you see the license plate on the car? No. ICP ninety nine. <laughs> So, a reference to Insane Clown Posse. Another. Oh, I've been yeah, really into these little friggin' little. Uh, You're catching Easter all the eggs. references that I don't. Yeah, get. Easter eggs and references have been all what's what I'm finding out of these, and the real joy of that's part of the fanboy joy of these things is, is to seeing. I didn't even notice that the cookies were covered in blood. Yeah, and he just <laughs> reaches over there and grabs them. He grabs and eats a cookie, and it's covered in their suicidal blood. <laughs> he, does, he doesn't even stop him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's he's an interesting character. Uh, I don't. I kind of I mean, think he's a good guy. I kind of don't mind his past. It, <laughs> the comic is called the Nail Biter, yeah. so it must all be about him. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, this was a good one. Is this a hiatus break? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know if they do six or five. I think they did five, and we've just started the last arc, if I remember correctly. Okay. Okay, so that's not because we, yeah, because we also had the hack and slash. So yeah, this is just issue two of the new arc. So uh, but, all in all, it's good, uh, man. This is an, uh, I'm, I'm between an A minus and B plus. This is where I, I mean, granted, it's very tertiary with the differences, but I think I'm going with an A minus. I really enjoy this, and I like that two panels where it really, really threw me for a loop in that daydream sequence where I thought they'd killed off our yeah. uh, our deputy or our our sheriff. So I think A minus is deserved as well. There, yeah. There's so much really cool stuff in here. Yeah. Um, I actually don't know why I have a minus in here. I'm going to give it a straight up A. Yeah. Because there there's a really there's really a lot of cool cool things in here, and it continues the story. It gives us a little bit more information, but not all we need. Yeah. To. I just like we got so much last one during all the tortures, and we know that there there's a legitimate reason for all these serial killers. There's an actual reason, and they're just not friggin' giving it to us, and that drove me a little bit nuts. Yeah, well, it's only a month. You got to wait, right? Maybe I thought we were going to get in this one, so we can. Who knows? Exactly. Um, let's look at Wicked and the Divine. Can you take the lead on this one? I want to get your take on a few things. Okay. Um, I won't get the 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 gods as well as you did, but it looks like Baphomet mm -hmm. is the guy that's killing the other gods to try to siphon their power. Years and, of life, he seems to think he'll gain additional years on the realm if he uh, yeah. kills other gods. And so I don't know how many folks have figured that out. Um, you know, now that we're up, we're fully stocked in in gods, we got all twelve, and then now and now they're Baphomet's going to start picking them all off to try to gain their powers. I, I guess that's the the thrust of the story from now on. And I don't know what Laura, her role is anymore. Now that she's out and mm -hmm. not definitely not a god, uh, I don't know what she's to do. Is she, is she to try to save them, the remaining ones, or I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure. Yeah, is she going to sing on one of the stages at this concert and kind of see if she has that overwhelming power over people that a lot of the gods have? I think she figured out that she doesn't. Okay. Because she said that she had a one-time snap where she could make fire, and uh, that, that happened once, and that was it. Hmm. And uh, is she going? Is she on like on a second stage or something? That's what I wasn't sure. It, I, at some point, it seemed like she was going to take, kind of do a little performance, not as a main thing. And I think that was kind of to see if she has kind of that power or that that magnetism. Well, the, our our twelfth god seems to, yeah, her, her reporter friend, <laughs> Cassandra, and it really really messes Cassandra up that she's uh, being <laughs> she gets positive reactions. Yeah, yeah, I don't think she likes it, and it, and it was kind of cool that she just realized, well, this I got this got forced on me, and I'm gonna die in two years now. Yeah, because she kind of breaks down, and and they talk about you know this is a blessing, except for the death part. Except for the best part, yeah. And yeah, so um, I, I there was a couple panels, pages at the end where it was like a conversation between is that Baphomet and somebody in the dark? 
and Morrigan, because the Morrigan and Baphomet both kind of sink into the abyss after uh, the Morrigan kind of quells his ability to try to kill Cassander on the main stage. Yeah, so yeah, I, I didn't really... I thought it was just a weird ending. Yeah, it's very odd, but I think the biggest thing we have to get from this is it looks like Baphomet is now going to go after Inanna, which is the prince-looking dude. Um, that seems to be who he's now picked up as the, the next easy mark to try, because he still thinks that he can gain some additional... Uh, to gain their... to steal their years and continue to hide if he can take them out, so... We know what his next act is as well, but we don't know who all knows that and what we can do to stop him. Because time is running out, and we see some of them panicking because they're going to die at the end of this two years, and some of them are just using their time as well as they can. Yeah, it's a there's a headless god on the cover of the next issue. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of cool. Uh, they included a bunch of really horrible cosplay attempts at the various gods in the back matter. And uh, yeah, kids, uh, if you're not going to be able to pull off better than, than this, don't even bother. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, they were really unrecognizable, uh, and really weak, weak sauce. Definite weak <laughs> sauce at the back there. Now, is it next month that we have our special uh, Fiona Staples covers coming into this? Oh yeah, I think so. Is that eleven? Hmm. Which we did, we did add. Yeah, mul multiples, I believe. We does add us some Fiona. Yeah. Uh, this one, I'm. I really enjoy looking at this book, mm -hmm. and I like following along and, and seeing what the plot point... I don't fully understand <laughs> what's a lot, happening. A lot of this needs two reads on this book. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I don't do that, so... <laughs> it, it, it's good, though. I really I really like it, and I gave it a B. Yeah, I've got it as an A-. I really enjoy this book. It's really captured me where I didn't think it would. And, yeah, uh, you, we, you actually go the extra mile... And do research, which you know is not a comics for fun and profit <laughs> staple. And you did re you did research on the gods and like really looked into it. You said, yeah, you're, and it's just you're, you're reading this on a level that I'm not even capturing. Yeah. And, and you really enjoy it when you look at it because it holds water. That's the crazy thing is like when you look at Baphomet and you see what lineage he's based out of, and you see that the Morrigan actually is based on you know three Irish Celtic gods all rolled into one, and that we see that Cassandra became an entity of both the past, the present, and the future. It's it's really kind of cool that the, they're taking things actually from real mythology and giving them space within this book. And then the question is, uh, is is that what people want in a comic? That they I want a, a, a thesis. <laughs> Some I people think, do. I, th I think your premise always has to hold water. I mean... yeah. And and just and it has to be engaging and the art's great. Yeah, so. and especially things that like if you want to be a fan of this book that you can delve into and get more out of it than the average reader is always a helpful thing for me. Yeah, um, definitely. I don't think I said it, but this is an A minus book, and I really, I still really like Wicked and Divine. You did say you did say that. Cool, cool, cool. Um, Amazing Spider Man number eighteen. We are still in that same battle, and. Uh, <laughs> But it, we got some closure this time. And sadly, it looked like Parker Industries uh, crumbled to the ground. I know, it was a great idea. Let's try to rehabilitate criminals and put them in a place that they can't get out of and really do some good work, but it looks like that's never going to happen. Yeah, um, I really like What's-Her-Face. <laughs> Dang it. The short girl. <laughs> Maria Marconi. Yeah. Uh, I, I, she was great. And she again, she comes to his rescue... And and helps cover his secret identity and help helps actually fight the bad guys mm -hmm. and it, it really is is a real breakout character continues to be a strong breakout character and uh, I really like her and uh, this this works pretty well I, I mean I I thought this was a fun closing uh, chapter to this story and I look forward to continuing to read it I don't know if it's you know the best Spidey I've ever read, but mm -hmm. it, it's it was still good. Yeah, there's, there's just, like there's a lot in here. Yeah, there's really cool stuff. Like I said, I really, really, really love Maria Marconi. I've said that from the moment that she was in a mm -hmm. um, Superior Spider-Man. She's a great character. She makes the right decision. She seems like 
just a great and awesome character, and she's she's helping Peter in ways that Peter can't even think of. Um, to be, you know, you know, I hate the hapless Spider Peter Parker and the oh, I can't get anywhere at any time. And she kind of quells all <laughs> is that he stuff. Old? Is he old, an old man. He seems to be an old man where he's always get just, off my lawn. Exactly. Peter Parker yells at clouds, but um, she kind of counteracts a lot of that by giving him excuses and ways out and, and kind of thwarting his attempts at uh, just being all completely lost at all times. So I really like what she brings to this book. And how do you like the B story on with Black Cat? I know you love that. I'm not a big Black Cat guy. I, I know. I want her out of this book. I don't. I mean, no matter what and how kingpin she becomes, yeah, I don't see her as a good villain, and she's just nothing. I mean, I, I want better villains for this book because I think, well, I think I'd rather have a couple. Ex- yeah, I think I'd have a, rather have a couple extra pages of the main story, mm-hmm. and then not throw this this throwaway Black Cat thing going on. I mean, yeah, okay, she's getting. She's going to get her all her possessions back. That's great, but this has been going on forever. Yeah. I mean, th- I, mean I, sh- I still like Slot's writing. Um, oh, yeah. I wasn't sure if I'd like this coming out of uh, out of uh, the the Spider-Verse and all that stuff, but so far, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still, it's still holding my interest. Like I said, uh, I like Marconi the best of all. She's my my biggest focal point in this is how, what spin she puts on things and kind of adds to Parker. And well, his, we just got out of spider verse. I mean, we just came out of spider verse and we really didn't get a fully explore all the ramifications. Mm-mm, from that. No, we've still, and now we're going to get derailed by secret wars. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I don't know if we'll care by the time we come back. It's very possible because like the only thing we, okay, we came out of secret wars and we have a Spider-Man who doesn't have a very good Spidey sense who is tapped out from is having half of his life force sucked out during that. So you don't even have a full fledged Spider-Man throughout this first arc. We don't know if that's going to come back into secret wars and then who knows what story momentum will lose by the end of secret wars. Yeah. And I I got a feeling they're going to leave this character alone and just let Slot do what he wants to do. And I, mm-hmm. I hope they don't, you know, mess around with it too much because he's got a lot of stuff to explore still. Yeah. And, uh, I, but it's going to be some time that, how long is Secret Wars? Is it a two month thing? I, I don't think I ever figured that out. <laughs> I think it's two months. I think, uh, Secret Wars is a weekly. There's four, uh, in May and there'll be four in June. And hopefully that's it. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, it's over. And back in the day, the first Secret Wars was a 12-month miniseries, so yeah. it went on for a year. But none of the mainline characters, character uh, comics, they were all like just affected for one month. And then they and then they went back to doing what they were doing. So uh, I, I just I just hate this stuff getting put on pause, and then you know meandering for a while with our with our event and then okay let's unpause it and let's pick up where we left off well i don't care as much anymore <laughs> you know <laughs> you've kind of left this hanging and now i don't i don't care as much it drives me nuts um did i give us a great idea didn't i no it's a b <laughs> it's <laughs> i'm the same thing so it's a b minus for me yeah yeah not, not bad still still a good comic uh i just these events, man. Uh, I mean, it's managed to hold me for 18 extra issues because I was ready to jump ship after Superior because that was what I was really into and wasn't yeah. looking forward to coming back to Amazing. That's true. You but did. It, you were poo-pooing it. Yeah, it's held me for three solid arcs since then, so I, I'm not jumping off yet, but we'll see. But I can see that they are that they could lose you with Sad Sack Peter Parker yep, for yep, an yep. Extended, extended period of time. Yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to uh, talk about that you read this week? That's all I've got. There was a few things like I didn't read Mainline Convergence, I didn't make it through Secret Wars, and I jumped off of Spider Gwen. So there's a few things I did not read this week that I I, I thought originally maybe I would. Yeah, it was okay. Spider Gwen. <laughs> um, hey, let us know what you think of our reviews. Let us know uh, if there's something we need to review that you're loving that we're just not uh, talking about enough, and uh, we'll take it under consideration. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I mean, I don't know. 
we've taken uh, suggestions before and reviewed things, so we Absolutely. might do that again. Yeah, well, we'd love to hear your feedback. We'd love to hear your thoughts on uh, anything from our review shows or our sneak peeks. So please go to comicsfunprofit.com for all our links and all our social media uh, connections. And you can also email us at comicsforfunandprofit at gmail.com. So uh, until next time, thanks for listening. See ya.